you'll see that ROM fixed. That's what you want to see at the end. And now we have our our GBA file. Here we're just going to run it. And you can see it makes sound. Yo guys, what's going on? I hope you all are having a good day. So today is the big day for Mac people at least. We're actually going to set up the tool chain, everything we need to make our own Game Boy program. So in theory, what we have at the end of today, you could run on a Game Boy Advance. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a pretty freaking big deal to me. So I'm really excited to go through this. It's gonna be a lot. Um, feel free to pause the video at any point. I'm just gonna go really fast. It's still kind of a long video, so I'm trying to kind of cram all this in. Please forgive me for that, but we're, we're gonna make it through. We're gonna get to the end of this. And by no means is this gonna be like the all one solution forever. You know, things are gonna change. So parts of this video may not even work for you anymore. And in that case, just leave a comment or there's a lot of different resources you'll find. And that's kind of the point I'm, I'm trying to make in this is at the end of the day, there's always, there's always somewhere you can go and they're gonna be like, oh, you should do this. It's just, it's confusing guys, but hopefully this is working out for you. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So first things first, you wanna make sure you're on the latest version of Mac OS. I'm on Catalina right now, latest version. Everything is updated. That's the first thing you do. So make sure you've updated everything and you should be set to go. So now we're gonna to go to the app store and download Xcode, definitely an essential if you're going to be making any kind of software on a Mac. Definitely have Xcode. We're not going to be using it, but we're going to be using parts of it. So it's important to have it regardless. I know it takes up a lot of space, but we definitely need it for this. So download it. And all right, we got it. So now we can open it. It's going to install all the stuff and just agree to that and then enter your password. It's gonna install everything. Alrighty, so now that that's done, we're gonna go to Safari. We can just exit out of this. We don't need it right now. We're gonna go to first check if you have updates, no updates, that's great. All right, now go to Safari. We're gonna get our toolkit, which is DevKit Pro. So if you just search DevKit Pro and then go to the getting started, which I'll link these in the description, but if you just go there, it's gonna have everything. Um, so yeah, now we, we can see it provides three tool chains. We're gonna be using DevKit Arm because that's the one for Game Boy Advance. And you just click on this package installer link and it's pretty simple. It's just like installing any other application. You got that package looking thingy in your downloads. You just double click on it. And of course we have to go to the system preferences, security and privacy general, and then open this cause it's gonna give us a warning that it's not secure, but we just open anyway. Cause we hope that it doesn't have any viruses. I mean, I haven't gotten a virus from it, so I think it's safe to open. So go ahead, open that, go through the installer, enter your password, Alrighty, we got all of that set up. That's awesome. We can move it to the trash. So now what are we gonna do? We're going to look and see, we need this. Uh, so what this just did is it installed this DevKit Pro Pac-Man, which is a package manager. Now we're gonna get to what those actually do later, but for now, open up this application called Terminal. Now, Terminal, it's something you should have if you're on Mac. It's very special. You're going to need to be familiar with it because we're going to be using it a lot. You can use the arrow keys to navigate that cursor and any command you want to run, just like this one, you enter the command and then you press return to execute it. So type in that command. We need to run this one. So if you need to go back, just go back, type that command in and it's going to install the software. Even though it says it couldn't install it, it just did because if I try to run the same command again, and then I press return, it's gonna say it's already installed because that's what it just did. So we're all good here. 
All right, so now we're going to go to the Pac-Man. So this is a special version of Pac-Man, the DevKit Pro Pac-Man. So Pac-Man is a package manager. Now, what the heck is a package manager? Well, for those of you who have jailbroken your iPhone before, you may be familiar with Cydia. Cydia is a package manager. And the purpose of a package manager is just to, to get the software on our machine. It's just like your app store in a way, I guess. So that's just kind of our app store we're using right now for Terminal. So what you should do before we get all this stuff from our package manager is just type in what I'm doing right now or what it says, enter your password, and we're just basically creating a file. That's what we're doing. And we're going to copy all of these variables in it to to give the shell kind of sort of a, a define, which matters later. We're setting up all these paths. It's just like essential stuff that's going to help us out later. So definitely need to do it. You can use those arrow keys again to navigate the cursor, then hold control X. Yes, by pressing Y and then press return and it saves it. So that's great. Okay, so now we can get the, the Pac-Man stuff. So how how do we how does the app store sync? Well, it automatically gets all the apps that but for a package manager we need to run the update command which syncs it with all the database. So here I'm just showing you guys we have the the DKP Pacman. But if we try to look for the regular Pacman which is a thing, we don't have that. So we're not going to be using that. But we are going to be using the DKP. So so we can go ahead and update. That's just going to sync with the databases. And now we what would we do to update all of our apps? We would we would see what apps we need to update. We can do that by pressing this running this upgrade command. So we do that. It's going to it's going to do that. And all of these are pseudo. So what that means is I'm running these as a root user except for this one. And a root user means you're the administrator. So that's just kind of important. Um so pseudo, yeah, it, it's something I would definitely look up what it means if you don't know what it is, but just use it where it says to use it and don't use it anywhere else. So this one, we do need to use the sudo. And what we're doing here is we're installing the, the group of tools and we can just press return for the default, press Y for yes, and then press return again. It's gonna install everything we need to make Game Boy games, which is just awesome. That means we don't have to do much. But oh no, we get this error, which I happen to look up because that's what I do. I don't know if that's what people actually do in the computer world, but that's what I do. And I found the kind of this the solution, I guess, on this GitHub, which again, I'll link down below. And so what we'll do is we'll actually just go into this file here We'll pseudo nano into it. Nano is a text editor, by the way. So that's that's what that means. And the only reason we need to use sudo is because it's a it's a root file that we need to get into. So we need that permission. So we'll uncomment root directory just by removing that hashtag and then type in the correct path that it's saying. And then again, control X, Y, return, save it. Awesome, so now we can actually try and run that command again by pressing up and then press return, press Y, and there we go. It's gonna install everything again, and hopefully it works this time. <laughs> I know it's a lot, guys. I'm sorry if I'm confusing, but this is just boring stuff we gotta get through, so. All right, so we got through that. Now we need to download the we're going to be building a music player so this is going to be an already built application that we're just going to be using throughout this series and this is tonk which is an amazing resource for learning game boy development i definitely definitely recommend reading their stuff right now i'm just downloading the example code from their website which i'll leave in the description but yes, definitely read this, at least some of this stuff. It's really helpful and it's a great resource. They even have a whole documentation on the sound engine of the Game Boy, which is what I'm basing this series off of. 
So now we can see we have all the code and example projects. We're going to be using this, this sound one demo. So we can see it has a make file to tell us how do we make our source code into that GBA file, which we can run on the Game Boy. And then the source code, it's right there. It's the C file. We're not going to be using the PN proj, so don't worry about that. But we can see the C file will open up in Xcode. Again, that's why I recommend having Xcode because it's a nice editor. You can see all the source code looking pretty and color coded and all that. So now we're going to download the emulator, the Open Emu, which I definitely recommend for Mac. It doesn't have uh, some of the advanced features, which we'll need later, but it's sufficient enough for what we're doing right now. So definitely download that. So this is basically our Game Boy that's on our computer. And we need to, again, give it permission to open that application through the system preferences. So open anyway. And then it's also trying to, you saw another pop up, we'll get to that. But what we do right now is it's going to, this is kind of a fancy animation, eh? All right, so click Next, and then we don't need all this stuff because we just need the Game Boy emulator. So everything else, we can just scratch that out. And OK, so now it wants to receive keystrokes, probably for the controls. So definitely allow that. It's not like they're trying to spy on everything you're typing. It's not that. Um, but yeah, it's just so we can use the controls. All right. So yeah, now we got that working. Okay. So now we can just straight up do a reboot. I'm going to close out of everything and you definitely need to do this reboot or else nothing is going to work. So reboot your computer fully, completely. And now I've just rebooted it. So this website right here that you're looking at, that's going to be important later. And I'll, I'll get to that later. So just keep that in mind. Again, I've linked it below on my YouTube. If you're on Instagram, um, you can just go to my YouTube and see. Uh, but yeah, so now we need to somehow get into this folder where our source code is and make it into our GBA file. So again, we're going to use the change directory command CD through terminal and then drag that in. And that's going to, once we press return, get us into our directory. We can do ls to see the files in there. And we can do make to, you know what, make our GBA file. So that's how we do it. It's that simple, but it's not simple when you get a bunch of errors like this. What does this one even mean? Well, this is trying to tell us that it can't find our compiler. So we need to set up some path variables. We can see we don't have our compiler path in here. So we need to, we need to set that up. So how we do that? We first check is the dev kit arm set. Yep, that has a directory. And that's why we use echo to see see what what it's what the value of that is. And then we can do path and I'll leave a helpful website below. But we do path equals path and then dev kit arm bin and then export and we're going to do path. So this is a lot to throw at you, but it just shows that these these variables are, they stand for something. They're basically like shortcuts. That's what that dollar sign means. That means you're, you're referencing a shell variable. So those are actually like shortcuts. So it's kind of important that we have those. And now it's just going to work more, but not quite. We have this undefined reference. Again, another important thing, you'll see shortcuts come in here. So the issue here is with our make file, this isn't a valid path right now. This libtonk, it's not pointing to the right, the right directory where our library is. So we need to go look this up online. That's what I do. And once I look it up online, oh, here it is, DevKit Pro, amazing. What do we do? The creator is saying that, oh, you can use the DevKit Pro variable to to get that path shortcut. So why do we need these path shortcuts? Well, here I'm going to show you in a minute. This is these are the libraries that we're using. We're using the libtonk library and that's important because it has a bunch of a bunch of things we're going to get to later in this series that are going to help us make our Game Boy game. 
or I mean the the Game Boy Music application. So that's very important that we use this library and we just need to point it to the right path where that library is. And there's two parts to that path. There's the include path and there's the lib path. And the difference between the two, the include path has what's called header files. So that's where all the declarations of the different things we're gonna be using are. And the lib path is where the actual library is. So there's just a little difference between the two, but you'll see, a lo you'll see it a lot in C programming. So it's kind of important, even C++. So yeah. So what I'm doing right now is going to the finder. I click go and then go to a folder and I hold down shift command dot. It's gonna show all the hidden folders. Go to opt dev kit pro lib tonk. Here we can see those are those paths we're trying to point to. So that's where those shortcuts come in, and that's why it's important that they actually mean something. So that's why we use echo to check. And sure enough, you can see all the header files in the library itself, the .a. And that's where we link it right there, dash l tonk, but that's already done, so we don't need to do that. And now let's try make again, and still not working. I know it's a bummer, but we're going to get it working. So GBA fix, why isn't that working? Well, this one I spent hours figuring out. GBA Fix is what what kind of makes the Game Boy game valid, I guess. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but Tonk explains it. And this website, which I showed in the beginning, this is a fixer. Like, if you just run this, run this export path command, I don't know why, but it just fixed it for me. So that's that's it. That's all I have. But it just shows, you know, there's resources out there to help you and you'll see that ROM fixed. That's what you want to see at the end. And now we have our our GBA file. So we can go ahead, double click this. It's going to open up in our emulator. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to my phone so you guys can hear the sound for this because it's a music application. So we, we need to hear the sound. Alrighty guys, so I hope you can see that well. I just switched to my phone so you can hear the sound from this application. But here we're just gonna run it. And you can see it makes sound. And that actually happens again if we press the B button. So right now you can go actually into the settings, edit game controls, and it will show you which buttons correspond to the different controls on the original Game Boy Advance. So right now B is S. So if I press S, we can see it plays through that sequence again. Kind of a beautiful sequence. I like it. It's like triumphant. It's like a battle cry or something like, I am here, I am here, I'm gonna fight you or something. I don't know. But yeah, music is great. Uh, but anyway, let's get back on track. So B will play through that little sequence. And then the left and right, which right now are Q and E, if I do that, and then we can use the, what is the D-pad, so this thingy, that right now is the arrow keys. So we can play through that in the upper octaves, and I'm just using the right button, I believe. And then left will make it go lower. So pretty cool stuff. It's working now, our program. I hope it worked for you guys. And this right now, this sound is coming from channel one of the sound channel on the Game Boy Advance. So when we start actually making sound with this thing, we're gonna get into how the channels work and all that stuff. So I hope to see you guys in the next episode, but I hope you enjoyed this one. Make sure to leave a like if you did and comment below what your thoughts are. So see you guys in the next one. Peace.